Welcome to Rivendell, Frodo Baggins. Howard Shaw's soundtracks to The Lord of the Rings have become some of the most well-loved film music of all time, and with good reason. It seems to perfectly capture and enhance the mood of its scenes, the ancient quasi-medieval era, and the huge variety of different cultures within this universe. In these videos, I want to look at how Howard Shaw paints a vivid musical world, with a wide array of themes and leitmotifs which are used to add colour to the characters, places, objects, and concepts of the story. Most of all, I want to document how he uses and develops these musical themes as the story develops, making his music fit intrinsically with what we're seeing on screen, so that the development of the music complements the progression of the plot. Ultimately, I want to show how he creates this musical universe for Middle-earth, which works in such a rich and beautiful unity with the films. The first video is going to look at how he paints places, and how these musical themes tie in closely with the story. The second will show you how Howard Shaw makes subtle musical connections between various ideas in the story. And the third video has some of my favourite themes which didn't exactly fit into either of those categories, but I had to include anyway because they were just too good to be left out. So first, let me quickly cover what a leitmotif is. A leitmotif is essentially a musical theme or phrase which is connected to a character, place, object or concept. And what makes things interesting is when the composer alters or develops the leitmotif to match the mood of the film. As a quick example, this track has a sad nostalgia about it. But in this track, with the same theme, he gives it a sense of anticipation and excitement. So let's have a look at how he paints different places. So this is the Shire theme. It's generally connected with the comfort of the Shire, home, and sometimes with the playfulness of hobbits. In fact, it has been remarked by some that Hobbit's only real passion is for food. It's often played on a fiddle or a pan flute, which gives the music a rustic countryside feel. A keen interest in the brewing of ales and the smoking of pipe weed. Old Tovin, the finest weed in the South Valley. What's the meaning of this? You've been in the form of maggots, crop! Good night, sweet maiden of the golden hail. Oh, I mind who you're sweet talking. Don't worry, Sam. Rosie knows an idiot when she sees one. But when needed, the theme has a nostalgic turn to it. And so we hear it whenever they're remembering or missing the Shire. I miss the Shire. I spent all my childhood. We got the ring this far to Rivendell, and I thought, seeing as how you're on the mend, we'd be off soon. Off home. So let's move on to As the city of Rohan gradually rebuilds itself, Shaw lets the theme grow stronger and more heroic. Listen to how it turns for hopelessness.
And now for strength. Now, military preparations. And Rohan will answer. Master the Rohirrim! Or here. These last two are epic and heroic. Now let's move on to... A majestic theme associated with the grandeur of Gondor. We just passed into the realm of Gondor. It first appears here in Solar Horn as Gondor is discussed. Are your lands kept safe? Give Gondor the weapon of the enemy. Let us use it against him. You cannot wield it. None of us can. We hear a sinister version in the base as Saruman taunts Aragorn about the throne. This exile crept from the shadows will never be crowned king. Gandalf does not hesitate to sacrifice those close And reharmonize to reflect a difficult relationship. Remember today, little brother. And then there's this. But if that theme represents Gondor in its military struggle, there's another theme. The White Tree, which represents the Gondor of the past and its beauty, nobility, culture. Have you ever seen his Aragorn? White Tower of Echthalion, glimmering like a spike of pearl and silver. Its banners caught high in the morning breeze. Been called home. The tree of the king will never bloom again. Why are they still guarding it? They guard it because they have hope. Faint and fading hope that one day it will flower. The king will come and this city will be as it once was before it fell into decay. Look! The king has got a crown again. Shards of Narsil.
Then there's Isengard, which develops least of these themes, but is still pretty satisfying. Its repetitive 5-4 beating and its huge metal percussion give it this industrial, military feel. So, those are the places. But things get really interesting when he starts making musical connections between different dramatic ideas. And that's what I'm going to look at in the next video. Would you destroy it? I want to make more of these in future, so if you enjoyed this video, then leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching.